precious one. And you're welcome. This is the Yashua Artist Drockers, a young prophet, Ezekiel Mekisele, coming your way live from the Salvation Christian Church worldwide, being located right in Ghana, Accra. And I want you to understand that God has a message for your life that will change your life forever. So I want you to sit down and lock your seat because God will speak to you right in this place. You know the book of Psalm 119 verse 11? The Bible says, Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. So when you hide God's word in your heart, it has the capacity to deliver you from the power of sin. You know that the doorway to the human soul is the heart. The only place that God can enter is the heart. In the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20, the Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door knocking. If anyone will listen to my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he will sup with me. So Jesus is knocking at the door. What door is he talking about? The door is your heart. The doorway to the human soul, like I said, is your heart. So Jesus wants to come into your life, but he's knocking with his word. When you hear the word of God like this, it's a sign that Jesus is knocking. You want to come into your life. You want to change your story. You know, I bet you God has a message that can change you forever. So sit down and listen to the word. You can contact us right on the number showing on your screen. And we'll pray for you with all your prayer requests and everything. And if you're seeking for information and direction as to how to visit us, you can see everything right on the screen. When you call us for more information, you get it. And I believe that God will speak to your soul. He will bless your life. So sit down. I'll be coming back to pray with you right after the message. Don't go. Hallelujah. He rescued the person from the water. And you bring the person to a safe land. Fine. You have saved the person. You have done a good job. But you've done that the best because the person used to cross the same water every day. He needs someone who will help him cross it. Hallelujah. Amen. So that next time he will not get drawn again. So Jesus says, I will be your shepherd. I've not only saved you from drowning or dying in the water, but I will also lead you. So that you will never drown again, you will never die again. I will lead you on the right path. Are you still there? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what made Jesus the shepherd of life. Look at verse 11, John 10 11. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Wow. He's a good shepherd. He gives his life for the sheep. He says, Hey, you are a sheep. You are supposed to die, but I'll die for you. That was who David was. You know, David put his life in his hands when he went to attack the lion who came to kill one of the sheep. Because facing the lion is a dull sentence or is a suicidal mission for a human being to try to fight a lion or even a bear. Because they can tear you apart and eat your flesh. Mm -hmm. But David put his life in his hands. He endangered his life by trying to rescue the sheep from the hands of the lion. And this he did. Hallelujah. Amen. You know why David did it? Because he was a good shepherd. Yes. He was depicting the character of Christ. Christ is a good shepherd. That's why God located David. When he sent someone to anoint one of the sons of Jesse to become a king, God was looking for somebody with a shepherd heart who would be ready to lay down his life for the sheep. And he saw that David had that kind of heart. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Jesus says, he is the good shepherd. He will lay down his own life for the sheep so that the sheep can have life and not die. That's why he's called the shepherd of life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Verse 12, but he that is an island and not the shepherd, we are in John chapter 10, but, but he that is an island and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, see of the wolf coming and leave the sheep and fear, and the wolf catches them, and scatter the sheep. You get it now? So there are some people, because they are hired, they don't own the sheep, but they are hired. 
to take care of the sheep. When they see the wolf coming, they just run away and leave the sheep so that the wolf will come and kill or start to them. Now he said in verse 13, he said, The hiring fear because he is an hiring and care of not for the sheep. He was hired. So he doesn't care so much for the sheep, but he cares so much for the money he's going to get. The service. Because he is hired. He is hired. It means he is working for money. And Jesus is not working for money. Hallelujah. Amen. He is richer. He is richer than all of us. He doesn't need our money. He is richer than all of us. He is working for the salvation of our soul. Remember, Jesus was rich, so rich. He owns the heavens and the earth. He is the God who owns the heavens and the earth. Amen. He has need of nothing. He is very, very damn rich. Jesus is very rich. You need to understand it, that Jesus is very rich. Now, we need to know this because if you can follow Jesus, you need to know who he is yes. so that nobody can tell you otherwise. So that nobody can deceive you. So that nobody can change your mind. Because when you follow Jesus, Jesus is not everybody's property. Amen. He's not only meant to be for the pastor. He is for as many as receive him. You know, John chapter 1 verse 12, the Bible says, But as many as receive him, to them gave him power to become the children of God, Amen. which were born not of the will of the flesh, you know, nor of the will of the blood, but of God. So when you receive Jesus, you give your life to Jesus. You have been given power to become a child of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Nobody controls your life except Jesus. Because you gave your life to him. That's why God does not force people to serve him. No. He doesn't force people. He convinces people. He persuades people. So they can know him. So they can follow him. You see, there's so many who cannot follow Jesus. Because they are not convinced of who Jesus is. They are not persuaded enough. That's why we take time to preach gospel. Amen. So that people will be persuaded. They will come to love this Jesus that we love. Hallelujah. Amen. They don't understand why we are so much committed and dedicated to the things of God. Why we say we will not do evil. Why we say we will live a righteous life. They don't understand. But we know why. Because we have come to understand that Jesus, he is the good shepherd. Amen. And the shepherd of life. He cares for our soul. He came on purpose to save our lives. Amen. Amen. Verse 14. He said, I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I'm known of mine. Mm -hmm. He knows his sheep. He said, that's why you can't deceive God. He can't deceive God. He can't deceive God. Say, God, I'm part of your sheep because I come to church every day. Amen. Mm -hmm. God, I'm part of your sheep mm -hmm. because I'm singing. Can he see me? He knows. He knows. God knows. He knows those who are his sheep. Not because the pastor has made a recommendation. God, let this one be your sheep. No. <laughs> he knows those who are his sheep because they have opened their hearts. God, look at our hearts. Hallelujah. Amen. He wants to know the real you by. Your heart is your heart for Christ. Very important. You need to give your heart to Christ. Amen. If you give it to Christ, you will know. The Bible says, God knows them that are His. He says, nevertheless, the foundation of God stands strong. That when we say, the Lord knows those that are His. And let anyone that nameth the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Yes. So God knows the people who belong to Him. You know them. You know them. That's why don't deceive yourself. You know, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, the Bible says, Do not be deceived. Whatsoever man so up, so shall he reap. You can't be deceived. You are sowing the seed. You think you are deceiving God? No, no, no. You are deceiving your own self. 
in James chapter 1, verse 22. The Bible says, Do not be hearers of the word only deceiving yourself, but be doers of the word. Amen. So when you hear God's word, you don't do it. It's not God that deceiving you, deceiving yourself. Amen. Likewise, if you preach God's word and you don't do it, you are not deceiving God or people but deceiving yourself. Because somebody might hear your preaching and change and repent and go to heaven. But you that is preaching it, if you do evil, you go to heaven. So you are deceiving yourself and not God, not people. When you preach gospel, gospel is gospel. All right. So Jesus says that he is the good shepherd. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and I am known of mine. Verse 15, as the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. But Jesus keep emphasizing on the Father. He laid down his life for the sheep. It's important. It's important. Life is what Jesus meant for us. He wanted to have life. He wanted to enjoy life. Now he says emphatically in verse 16, he said, Other sheep I have, which are not of this world, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Wow. So the body of Christ is one. One shepherd is Jesus. There's other sheep who are not in this fold. That means there are so many other Christians. You might not be part of our church, but they are still God's people. Hallelujah. Amen. God's people are everywhere God chooses them to be. Those that God said they should come to this church, they will come by fire by force. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Wherever they are, when the time comes, they will just walk into it. Then they will say, as if somebody is pushing them. It's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Holy Spirit. Amen. Ah, he has Amen. Amen. When Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church, the gates of God cannot prevail against the church. He meant it. And he is the one. Over 2,000 years, he is the one in the church. Amen. He is still bringing so many. Amen. Yes, the most stubborn type of people. God brings them to accept the gospel. People who are once again the gospel, they came to receive the gospel. Look at people like Paul, who went to destroy the church by every possible means. It's the same person God used to build the church. So, who can battle with the Lord? Hallelujah. He's the shepherd of life. When I give my life to this shepherd of life, he's in control. So, I like what Jesus says. I like what Jesus says. Verse 17. Praise the Lord, precious one. You're welcome. I believe that the word of the Lord changed your life. That message you heard was a timely message. It is just meant for you. I mean, you especially. You see, God's word is programmed for your life. The word of God is the spirit. In John chapter 6, verse 63, Jesus said, the flesh profits nothing. It's the spirit that gives life. And the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and the life. So God's word came to give you life right now. And I want you to receive the word in your heart because when you do that, it gives you a transformation, a change of life. God's word is meant to transform your life and make you the kind of person that God created you to be. When the word of the Lord changes you, you become who God wants you to be. Don't settle down for anything lesser than the person that God created you to be. And this can happen right when you take step by step approach to the word of God because God's word came to accomplish something in your life. In Isaiah chapter 55 verse 10 to verse 11, the Bible says, My word shall not return unto me void, but shall accomplish the purpose for which I sent it and that which I please. So God's word came to accomplish something in your life. And I believe that that word can change your story. It can change your life forever. So I want to pray with you based on the word of God because God wants to change your life from a non-entity to some entity. God wants to change your life from nobody to somebody because God has a plan for your life. He wants to elevate you. His word says you shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you believe that, you need to give your life to Jesus first of all. I want to pray with you right now. 
And I believe that God is going to touch your life. Now, if you want to give your life to Jesus for the first time, just say these prayers after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word that you have spoken to me. I receive your word. Forgive my sins and wash me with the blood. From today, write my name in the book of life. For I give my life to you now. In Jesus' name, wash me with your blood and accept me in your kingdom. I thank you, Lord. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer, I believe that God has ministered to you. Now, I want to speak into your destiny. May God bless your life and change your destiny. May God heal your diseases. May God deliver your bones and your flesh. May God open business doors for you. Financial doors be open for you. May his countenance shine on you. This day, may you hear good news. May you see a good thing. May the Lord open new doors for you. May you make a progress in everything that you do and say, the hand of the Lord visit you. The power of God go with you. The grace of the Lord be with you. In Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. You are blessed. So, I want you to understand that God always have a way for you so look at it a day with us and then just tune into the station and i believe that the same time next week you will be blessed more even more because god has a word for your life he's still speaking god be with you thank you lord jesus christ